reading to you from the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, flawless Word of God, the authorized version, otherwise known as the King James Version. Still at the top of the list of forbidden books of the whore, Roman Catholicism. <clears throat> if you're Catholic, you don't have, you don't have the right book. <laughs> this Catechism of Rome. This is what you're taught. But yet, it's interesting. Because this contradicts what, what um, Francis is doing. But then again, Francis is a puppet, subservient to Arturo Sosa, the black pope who controls Catholicism. Catholic lies. John 8. 43 on to verse 44. If you happen to have an authorized version, go ahead and get it. Read along with me. Read along with me. Why, Catholic, do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye, now remember, ye is more than one. Okay? Okay? Ye are of your father, the devil. Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, is Satan's church and Satan's religion. Christianity is just a daughter of the Hua. Roman Catholicism, especially nowadays. Dude, brother, drop your argument while it used to, what it used to be ain't and never will be. Okay. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, comes out from himself, a fire destroying from within himself. For he is a liar, and the father of it, yea, hath God said. We've talked about this. There will be links in the description box, recently even. Today is the 27th. Did you read the proverb for today? Did you read any scripture today? Why not? Oh, I got this. Oh, shut up. I, I, brother, sister, I love you. Shut up. Shut up. If you don't have at least 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Start out small. You don't have that for our Lord. He's giving you, he's given you eternity. You don't have 10 or 15 minutes in your day to be in His Word? You know I love you, brother, sister. Stop that. In the, in the description. Stop it. Proverbs 27, verses 11, all into verse 13. My son, be wise. There are two wisdoms. There is the wisdom that is above, from above, and there is the wisdom that is on our level, which is what? The wisdom that is from above is what? Pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits, right? The wisdom that comes from our level is what? Earthly, dirt, sensual, led by your feelings, devilish. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No marvel that his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Now that's not just relegated to religion, 
Remember, ministers of righteousness could be doctors, lawyers. Okay, just keep that in mind. But, my son, be wise. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, beginning of knowledge. And make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. Job, the book of Job, one in chapters one and two. That's how can Thank you, brother. I will. We will. We will. We will. Go to Job. And learn that verse, verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. Now, who's going to reproach the Lord? But check this out. Check this out. Okay? Job 1, verses 6 on to verse 9. Now, there was a day when the sons of God, angels, angels, okay, in this context, okay, all right, the book of Job is after the flood, I, I, I corrected that, I used to think it was before the flood, clearly it's after the flood, before the law, before the law, somewhere during the dispensation of the patriarchs, okay, so, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? This is a testimony from the Lord about Job. I don't know about you, Satan. I want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come on. Instead of getting up there, it's like, I had to kill you because you wouldn't straighten up. Just get in there. I'm, I don't want to even look at you. And Christianity tells you, well, that's okay. The Lord means nothing. Absolutely. See, when you have a mindset like that, that shows that the Lord is not in your thoughts anymore. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Look at Satan, Lucifer's response, that old serpent, the devil, a liar, from the, a murderer from the beginning, because there is no truth in him. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Yea, hath God said, right in front of God. Okay? You got to remember that about Satan, people. Lucifer, he's seen the face of the Lord. He knows exactly what God looks like. Well, that means we could believe the Roman Catholic depictions. No. No. You can't trust anything from Rome. Oh, yeah, there, there was a person, spirit, soul, and body, named Paul, who was an apostle. There was a person, spirit, soul, and body, named Peter, who was an apostle. Scripturally, you can't prove one lick that he went to Rome. Okay? There was a woman named Mary. Yes. But it's not the Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, uh, Diana of the Ephesians that Rome tells you. Okay? Revelation 12. One verse. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now... Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Yea, hath God said. The inquisitions. Okay. Back to uh, Proverbs 27, verse 11 again. My son, be wise. And make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. A prudent, prudent, equated with wisdom of the Lord. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Those who take no heed. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger. And Rome would take the fillings out of your teeth if they could. Just like the Christians in the buildings. 
and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Wonder who that strange woman is. That'd be that'd be Rome. Now contextually here, you know, it's like Proverbs seven. You know, that's you that's not talking uh, yeah. Yeah, that's talking about a whore, a harlot. Rome is the mother of harlots. Come on, dude. Come on. Dude. Okay. So the strange woman who's on every corner. Lies to you. You know, the Dark Ages. Now, whatever they tell these kids in shul, um, I don't know. I, I don't care. But, you know, why was it called the Dark Ages? It was called the Dark Ages because in that time period, Rome was on top. And most of the common people at that time were illiterate. They really were. And... Rome kept the word of God from people. In order during the Dark Ages to read what God said, you had to read, be able to read Latin. And you got to remember, old, the Old Latin is one of the seven purifications that the word of God went through to arrive at the perfect finished product in English, the authorized version. Okay, Latin is one of the seven purification, language purifications. But um, in order to read what God said, which was which at that time, of course, um, Rome was holding captive. Okay, they were. They did not give us the scriptures. They gave you the Bible. They sure did with extra added books that contradict the main canon of scripture. Anyway, okay, but they kept the word of God from the people, from the common people who mostly were illiterate. You had to read Latin. The, the, the services were, the scriptures were in Latin at that time, okay? And what a way to control people when they don't have the wherewithal to be able to read the scriptures themselves. So, during that time period, Rome was on top. It's called the Dark Ages because Mystery Babylon kept the common people in the dark about what God said. That's the real reason why it was called the Dark Ages. Not because of its brutality, even though it was brutal, because Rome was in control. And once Rome is in control again, after we, the body of Christ, get taken out of here uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when Rome's in control, it's going to make the Dark Ages look like nothing. Okay, It's a reverting back to the Dark Ages. Okay? All right? But that's why it was called the Dark Ages. And interesting, Tyndale gave a great quote. If God from Tyndale, he said, I defy the Pope and all his laws. All his laws. Do you realize, Catholic, that your religion... Your church, which is Satan's, belongs to Satan. This is Satan's religion. This is this is Satan's book. Okay? This is Satan's book. Do you realize that you are under a law of man? Rome is the ultimate in legalism. Okay? Works salvation without the assurance of salvation. And look at the daughters of the whore. Look at Islam. You can't ask a mother. I mean, you can, but it's like, hey, Muslim, do you know if you're going to heaven when you die? No, they don't. Because it comes from Rome. A moron. Mormon. Talk about a perverse sex cult, similar to the Masons in that regard. Oh, no wonder, because the, 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 um, the morons were founded by the Masons. <laughs> Joseph Smith. Okay. Ask a, ask a moron, Mormon, hey, you know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die? And what's the ultimate end of the moron, the Mormon? Hmm? Sexual. Yeah. They teach that it is the, for a Mormon woman for eternity to have spirit babies. And that the males are going to procreate for eternity. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and incidentally, I have read the Quran. I don't recall ever seeing anything in the version of the Quran that I have. I don't remember ever seeing anything about this 74 virgin thing. Just, just saying, okay? Okay? But see, and also, the Jehovah's. You ask a moron or a Jeho, hey, know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die? They can't answer it. Because they're daughters of the whore, see. They're daughters of the whore. The Dark Ages was were dark because Rome kept this from the people. Okay. Now that does not mean that Rome gave us the act of God gave us the scriptures. Rome, yea, hath God said, has given you hundreds of Bibles. God just wrote one. Okay? God gave us this. Rome gave you the Bibles. Okay? But you got to remember, Latin was one of the seven language purifications. And Rome, which knew the truth, that, and that's what makes Rome dangerous. Rome, the, the people who teach you, the Jesuits, they know what the truth is, but they purposely go against truth. Okay? They have God said. Okay? These Jesuits, they know what the truth is. See, there, there has to be a knowledge at least of the truth in order to deceive people in the way that Catholicism does. And hence, that's had to talk about going past the point of no return. But they were the dark ages because the people were kept in the dark. And of course, the Protestant uh, Reformation. And a quote from Tyndale. I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spare my life ere many years, I will cause a boy that driveth the plow shall more shall more shall know more of scripture than thou dost common people i i came across a comment on the uh the previous video and i deleted it because i ain't, i ain't got time for that i ain't got time for that these catholics who to this day Catholics aren't really encouraged to read their Bibles. You, you Catholics, are like yeah, I am, but what? But but, what did they tell you? Don't read it too much because you'll fall into heresy. You need to go to your Jesuit priest in order to explain the scriptures to you. And Catholic, that's exactly what you're taught. They'll be like, well, the, our, our priest says to read the Bible. But not too much. You don't read it too much. Read a little. And then let me tell you what it means. You're a slave. You're under mind control, Catholic. And then they say stuff like, God never said to read the Bible. You're right. You're right. God never said. You're right. God never not one time said, read the <laughs> Bible. You're right. Kind of like around the same uh, shoe of, well, Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. Jesus never said, I am God. He never said that. You're right. He didn't have to. What do you mean? He said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. And what happened? The Jews picked up the stones and were going to kill him. Why? Because he called himself the Father, Catholic. And you, you guys, you Catholics, you, your church, from its inception, one God and <laughs> three persons. You don't have the right God from the outset, Catholic. There ain't no such thing as a saved Catholic. No, sorry. 
How can you be saved, Catholic, when you don't even have the right God? Catholics can be saved and become a saint of the Church of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I remember Mr. Ruckmans that made the thing. Well, I believe there are saved Catholics. Mm -hmm. There ain't no such thing as a saved Catholic. You don't have the right God. You don't have the right doctrines. Okay? Your, your foundation is on sand, Catholic. But the Catholic is taught what? Oh, go ahead and read the Bible. But... Don't, don't read it too much because you'll fall into heresy and you need a Jesuit trained cemetery to come around and explain these things to you. Why is that? Because they don't have the spirit. But you, you, you're you right. God never said, read the Bible. Uh, Isaiah chapter 34. Just one verse. <laughs> this, this one's kind of simple. To, but. but see, Satan doesn't want you reading the scriptures. Oh, Satan, he, you know, read an NIV, dude, read, a, read an ESV, read, the, but whatever you do, oh, don't read the authorized version. Satan doesn't want you all to get saved. He's got you under his control like a marionette. Isaiah 34, just one verse. Verse 16. Uh. Are you are you looking? I know you are, brother. Sister, I know you are, but are, are you looking at that? Isaiah 34, verse 16. <laughs> uh. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded. And his lowercase spirit, S spirit, one that he imparts, it hath gathered them. Well, <laughs> Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read, huh? You're right, though. God never said. You're right. Read the Bible. He didn't. He never said that. You are right. You are right. Acts chapter 17, one verse, verse 11. The enemy who I hate with perfect hatred, and I saw this. He, he made a little short or something. It's like, the Bereans were lost. You, you... Yes, and they had more wherewithal because they wanted the truth. And they, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a way to defend not reading the scriptures so someone can be controlled by your church. Ugh, disgusting individual. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Uh, let, uh, let's read verses 10 and 11. Let's add 12. 10 to 12. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They wanted truth. Well, they were lost. What? Only a devil will point out something like that and make a big to-do about it. What are you trying to hide there, pal? Don't you... Ain't them cigarettes gotten rid of you yet? Ugh! Anyway, so, sorry, sorry. Anyway. Yes. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few, quite a bit. And, and see, the, the, the mindset of some of these people, when trying to get you away from the scriptures, uh, and to not search the scriptures yourself, 
okay they'll say well God didn't say that so <laughs> second Timothy chapter 3 verses 13 on to the close but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them who teaches you God uses man yes he does we're going to address that but see this is something that the Catholic doesn't have that's why the Jesuit priest tells the Catholic don't read it too much come to me because Catholics don't have the right God and they do not have the Lord the Holy Ghost the Lord is that spirit within them if a Catholic does they ain't sticking around in Catholicism how could you you can't go from Christ to Rome Alberto Rivera said it himself you can't go from Christ to Rome you can go from Rome to Christ but you can't go from Christ to Rome if you are one who goes from Christ to Rome you need to examine yourself whether or not you're truly saved buddy okay it doesn't happen but but continue thou verse 14 in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them we're going to address this stay with me here okay because where do we learn these things from the Holy Ghost Come on down a bit. Let's continue. And that from a child, a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Why do you think? Why do you think the whore is so dedicated at getting your children? And you, you put them in these schools run by these guys, the Jesuits. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. I, of, of course, Catholic argument, yea, hath God said. It says profitable. It says, it doesn't say needful. God is a spirit. But see, a Catholic is told God is spirit because they take out the A. How, see, God get, wants us to be able to discern through his word which is which. That's why Satan has given you a plethora of Bibles that is not the word of God. Okay? All right? See, profitable. Okay? If you don't have a perfect standard and are not searching the scriptures yourself, you've got to go to man, don't you? <laughs> and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And see, the result of us searching the scriptures daily, seeking out the book of the Lord, okay, we, we addressed this in a recent video, which will be in the description box. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. <laughs> Preach the word. Well, where is his word? Oh, it's in one of the myriad of Bibles. No, it isn't. It's right here. The authorized version, pal. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Doctor. Doctor. Where do you get doctor? <laughs> Roman Catholic Church. You go to hell. That's because that's where that's where they're guiding you to, pal. That's where they're guiding you to, pal. Okay? And remember, Romans chapter 10. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith 
cometh by hearing, and hearing by the lowercase w written word of God. In the comment section, like I said, I deleted the comment. Some putts uh, made the thing that using the Catholic argument about, you know, this guy with his interpretation, this is why you got to go to Catholicism, blah, blah. I, you know what? I shouldn't have removed the comment. I, that's happened because I'll read it and it's like, dude, look, you come around, you want to make a comment and salt in me like the one guy, what's your problem, bonehead? You're right, my, my skull is made out of bone. Your, your head is made out of mashed potatoes. And he's like, what's your problem, bonehead? And it's like, Rome! Rome is my problem! Catholicism is my problem! And guess what there, buddy? Tough guy, pal? Whether you want to admit this or not, Rome's your problem, too. Rome is your problem, people. The enemy of all mankind is Rome. But the one comment, the individual was doing that exact thing. That, you know, this guy with his interpretation, this is why you need to go to Rome. That's basically what the individual was saying. The Catholic argument of don't read the word of God by yourself. You need to come to us so we can tell you and then lead you to hell. That is the Catholic argument. That is what Catholics teach their people this very day. And the Catholics, well, they say to read the Bible, but, but, not too much. Make sure you put it down. Because if you read it too much, much learning doth make thee mad, right? It's like, you know, how many times that, that, that one wicked cackle demon lady, <laughs> you know, where are you sending them? Talking to me when, you know, because we almost got into it. <laughs> Pretty good. But she's like, where are you sending them? Uh, to the Lord. Through the scripture. Well, they need to be fed. Yes, they do. The Lord will feed them through the scripture. She was trying to do the Catholic thing. Well, you got to get them to a church building. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, verses sixteen on to verse twenty-one. To the close. Now see, this is what was accused of me in the previous video, uh, getting on the Roman Catholic holiday that has now passed. Okay, that has now passed. All right. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereon too ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star, talk, a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Private interpretation. You got to go to Rome in order to learn the true interpretation. No. And see, this is what was accused of me when uh, we were attacking the Roman Catholic holiday that just passed. Okay? That just passed. All right? Someone wanted to uh, defend Satan's church and Satan's religion. Okay, uh, Rome is all about private interpretation. Search the scriptures daily. Always encouraging 
You, brethren, aren't I? Even my enemies have to admit that. Search, read these things, read it yourself. Come on. Come on, let's go. Not wrong. Oh, 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 read it, but don't read too much. Come to me, you have to say, so I can lead you astray. I mean, <clears throat> lead you in the right way. And you, whoever, and yeah, I blocked you. I ain't got time for your stupidity. But uh, you can go to hell. Okay? This very day, uh, December 27, 2023, Catholics are to this day being taught that. Well, go ahead and read it, but, 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 but not too much. Because you don't want to get involved in heresy. That's because they don't have the Lord within them. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Ah! <laughs> yeah, by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. See, we saints, we serve one God comprised of spirit soul and body. Catholicism serves three gods that they claim are one. Three persons. Okay? Rome doesn't have the right God. If you don't have the right God, then guess what? You don't have the right doctrine. You don't have the right Christ. You don't have right salvation. Oh, Brad, you bet. Dude, the hour is late. The rear end of that Titanic is bobbing. Every pun intended. Okay? It's going to go down eventually. And, like, constantly been telling you, Christianity, don't scare them. No, scare the hell out of them. Amen. 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 Uh, working backwards, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 12. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And how does Rome please man? Simple. You feeling like you've done something to earn your salvation. Well, that's pleasing to man. I've been confirmed. I've been baptized. I had the cookie. I've had the wine. You know, I've had a good confession. Okay, you've... I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? That's what Rome offers you and all of her daughters. Okay? But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verses 14 on to verse 24. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They're saying that to God the Father. Think about that. The Lord, who is the author of the scriptures. You talk about chutzpah. And what, what do these Christians do? What do they do? You need the credentials. We don't let anybody in the pulpit. <laughs> I beg to differ. You let any Jesuit devil in there. You guys want. Hmm? It's all about, you know, go, and, and see, that's the mentality. That's the mentality. How can you be, you know, you're, you're a preacher. You didn't go to college. You, you need the credentials. Oh, I need man's permission, huh? huh? And then they twist that with that and Peter and uh, Rome, uh, Romans 13 and they 
where they don't keep reading in Romans 13. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, see, we're supposed to follow every ordinance of man. Uh, keep reading there, Jack. Okay, keep reading there. All right, all right. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Okay? He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. And what did we read in John chapter 8, verse 44? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Catholic. But he that seeketh his glory, that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast the devil. Who goeth about to kill thee? Wow! Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave, you, gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Question. How are you to judge righteous judgment if you do not have a perfect standard to base your judgment upon? What's the, uh, what's the alternative? Oh, you, well, you got a whole bunch of Bibles and you got you to gotta go to someone who's been trained by the Jesuits to tell you. You're on drugs. You're, you're cracked in your head, which is made of mashed potatoes there, uh, tough guy. Okay? <clears throat> now, what did I say we were going to read to? Verse 24. Oh, that was it. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgments. R but judge righteous judgment. Again, how can you judge righteous judgment if you don't have a perfect standard? And see, this is what you Catholics are missing. This is why you're being told to read, read your Bible, but don't read it too much because you'll get into heresy and you've got to come to us so we can fix you right. Scripture teaches you otherwise. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, capital C, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, the Holy Ghost, the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Read the whole chapter, but check out verse 17. Okay? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, which false converts and devils really have a problem with. Of sin! Because they believe not on me. Catholics do not believe on the true God of the Scriptures. They believe on the God of a Bible who is one God composed of three persons. That's insanity. Of righteousness. Because I go to the Father, and you see me no more. 
of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged who you Catholics serve, Satan. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. And here's what's missing from the Catholic. Here's why the Catholic is told by their priest to not read this, especially the scriptures, which is still on the list of forbidden books. But this is why the Catholic is told not to read scripture, because if the Catholic were to read like the authorized version themselves, sooner or later the Lord's going to get a hold of you. And you're going to get out of that. Okay? Catholic priest tell the Jesuit priest, like, go ahead and read it, but not too much. Come to me and I'll tell you about it. Catholics don't have this. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. For whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to things to come, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. You know, I made mention, I made reference unto it, Second Corinthians, chapter 3, come on, Second Corinthians, chapter 3, not First Corinthians, idiot, <laughs> Second Corinthians, chapter 3, Now, the Lord, uh, let's read, uh, uh, let's read verses 14 under verse 17 in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Read the whole chapter on your own time, Catholic, from the scriptures, okay? But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Yeah, because Moses, the law, and the law is not a faith. Okay? But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord... The veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that capital S Spirit. And where the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. You have, If you're saved, you have God the Father living within you. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father. The Holy Ghost, that's the Lord that's in you. Okay? You have the Father in you if you're saved. Okay? When saved, always saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the capital S Spirit of the Lord. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. And see, Catholics don't have the Lord within them. You don't. If you did, you would get out of Catholicism. There's no way. There's no way. You are at first, okay, the Lord saves you, and you'll be like, whoa, this, this is of the devil. More sooner rather than later, the Lord's going to get you out of Catholicism. Because Catholicism is Christianity. And Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered to the saints. God wants to talk to you through His Word. Through His Word, dear friend. But see, what, what is Catholicism? I made mention to. Catholicism is all about the laws of men. Titus chapter 1, verses 10 unto the close of chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verses 10 unto verse 16, close of the chapter. 
For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, circumcision. The reference is here to the Judaizing Jews who rejected it, rejected the truth, the gospel, and wanted to keep people under the law. Okay, we've talked about that in many videos. Rome does the same thing. Rome wants to bring you under their law, which is contrary to the scriptural law found in the scriptures. Okay, they have their own set of laws. Okay, they have their own set of laws. It's right here. Okay, and it's right there. Vatican Council too. Okay, they have their own laws. Okay, and Catholicism is trying to bring you under their own laws. Verse 11, whose mouth Mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses. Isn't that what Rome does? Yeah. Teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. All these, these phallus houses, these church buildings, all about tithing. And they go to Malachi. Malachi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, prove me now. That, that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Okay? Church buildings are not sanctified in the New Testament as places that we... God lives within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You Catholics don't know that and don't accept that because you're not saved. Okay? One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, that. said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Cretans, a certain kindred, a certain kindred. The scriptures are saying are always liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies. Really, go figure. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Yes, people, I hate the day that was just passed on Monday. I hate it. I hate it because its origin is here. And because, thank you, brother, um, because as it says in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, hold the place here, we're not done. 2 Thessalonians, I kept saying 1 Thessalonians, and brother's like, uh, Brad, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, not, there we go, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which we have, which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Traditions. Well, we've always done it like this. And by whether by our word or or our epistle. And the Pauline epistles does not give credence to a man-made holy day. Holiday, excuse me, you're right. Holiday um, that is contrary to the Lord and glorifies the devil. You can do all your scriptural twisting you want to, buddy. You're dead in the water with this. It, the, the scripture is against you on the day that has just passed, a couple days ago. Okay, but that that's that's over and done with. Okay. Yes, you're right. Those of you that have commented and got a hold of me. You're right. I do hate that day. I hate it. Because it's against my father. And you guys, and unfortunately some saints want to take something that comes from Satan and put it in here and say it's okay. <sighs> but, let's keep reading in Titus. 
Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled by Rome, and unbelieving, not believing in the true God, is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Where are you leading them? Where are you pointing? Uh, the scriptures right here, Jack. People, read the authorized version of scriptures. Read it. Believe it. It is God's word. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Here's a good one for you. 13 on to verse 22. Now... When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, this current dispensation, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Unlearned and ignorant. They didn't know the, the ins and outs like the Pharisees and scribes. But see, as we addressed in the one video, how do we know, which will be in the description box. Um, Pharisees and Sadducees, could quote you scripture probably all day. Did they believe what they were reading? No. No, they didn't. This is the problem. That another problem that comes from being a Catholic. Um, you're taught to believe man, not God. So, of course, when you're reading man's word like a Bible, you don't even believe that. Verse 13 again. Now when they, the, the, these, and if you haven't figured it out, the, these guys are the modern Pharisees. Okay? Not us saints that want to see you all get out of Rome. But these guys. These are the modern Pharisees. Rome. Because they take tradition. Man. And, okay, tradition is right up here. And scripture, especially, is all the way at the bottom. And see, their tradition with their Bibles are, are even here. The traditions, man. It's all about feelings. It's a joke. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now stop right there. Been with Jesus. How many of you saints have been in like a grocery store and you're next to someone and you don't even have to say a word? Now granted, did, did, did you put on pit putty? Okay, but you, you don't even have to say a word. And the dude is like freaked out about it. I mean, look at him covered in tattoos and whatnot and wearing a Slayer t-shirt. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> but the Lord within the saint gives kind of like an unspoken testimony. There was a charismatic guy that I used to know uh, who said, well, that's because the lost can see your body glowing. <laughs> oh, you crazy, pal. <laughs> well, then what do you expect? You saw God, right? I hope you're doing well, by the way. I really do. I really do. Anyway. <laughs> but that you have been with Jesus. Have you been with the Lord today in the Scriptures? Have you, have you conversed with the Lord today? See, that shows. See, the more time you spend with the Lord in Scripture, the more it shows. What, do men light a candle and then put it under a bushel? No. But see, when you're taught to not to go to the Lord, but rather to go to man to explain something that isn't even his word, it also shows, doesn't it? And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could not, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they confirmed with among themselves, saying, What shall we do? 
to these men. For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But, they have God say, that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. You blaspheme the Holy Ghost! Uh, show me in Acts chapter 2 when Peter said, where Peter said that. <laughs> Peter, after he gives his little oration, and the guy's like, these guys are full of new wine. And Peter's like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost! <laughs> uh, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Which one? Which Jesus? It's all kind of Jesus. Even uh, Charles Manson got that one right. There's all kinds of Jesus. Huh? Again, I'm wearing this purposely for this specific topic. There's all kinds of Jesus. Oh, there's the three person Jesus, right? Okay, there's a Jesus of the morons. There's a Jesus of the Jehos. <laughs> there's a Jesus of uh, uh, Islam. There's all kinds of Jesus. <laughs> Which Jesus are you talking about? <laughs> but Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, judge ye. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was none. See, when the truth manifests itself, even our enemies are like, okay, that, that was the real deal. Like with the Egyptian magicians, that could mimic the the the, uh, the rods being turned into uh, serpents, the blood turning water to blood, like many of the magicians today can do similar, like taking water and turning it into wine. That Chris Angel guy did that. Okay, they could also cut up the frogs. Eh? Oh, I love frog legs. It's been a long time since I had frog legs. But when it came to turning dirt into lice, a living organism, they couldn't do that, could they? Oh, they could. You can read about that in Exodus. See, Satan can mimic certain things. But he's only so far that they can go. Let's read verse 22 as well here. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 18 on to verse 25. Then you might be saying, well, okay, you're saying that the Lord will guide us into all truth. Then, then what? we don't need man. Well, no, you don't. But see, God has ordained man to preach. I'll show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. The cross is all about death. The cross is all about death. Death destined to die. See, you can't be fixed unless you be broken. You can't be born again unless you die to self. Okay? The cross is death. And there are some out there that preach about the cross, but when it comes to coming to the Lord, they like to skip over the death of the cross. Sleazy believists, fake gracers. Perfect example of that. 
oh, they, they, they talk about the cross, they talk about the blood, and all that stuff. Yes, they do. But scriptural repentance and brokenness, they like to conveniently jump over that and go straight to belief. Stinking devils. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Well, repentance is a work. Just believe and receive. Perfect example. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But unto us which are saved. Hey, Catholic. Catholic. Check your Bible. It says being saved. Doesn't it? Catholic, have you ever wondered why you can't have you can't have assurance? Because it says so right here. That's what the sin of presumption. You poor pathetic creature, you. And I mean that in love. Okay. You read your Bible, Catholic. It says being saved. No, 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 no. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. It is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Prudent in this world, such as the Jesuits. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Who is the one who speaks of the world? Hmm. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Oh yeah, he has, with the authorized version. Catholic, have you ever considered why the Roman your church doesn't want you reading the scripture? Because we'll fall into heresy. No, you get saved. There's a big difference. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. To wisdom. The wisdom that is first from above. Hold your place here. Let's go to James. As our beloved brother said, that sounds Jamesy. It is Jamesy. Okay. James 3, verses 13, on to the close. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, Catholic. You are serving Satan. You are in Satan's church. You believe in Satan's religion. You believe in the God of Satanism. One God and three persons. Okay? For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And God is not the author of confusion. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Talk about hypocrisy. You talk about hypocrisy. Read a Bible. You talk about hypocrisy. Okay? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And when the scriptures speak, they are for war. Look at it! After that, uh, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. What are we reading to in 1 Corinthians? To verse 25. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. And we just, just to wisdoms. Wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, devilish. And of course, while, we're, we're, while this is rolling around, uh, like our dear brother pointed out in his beautiful video that the Lord gave him, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of man. man. <laughs> after the rudiments of this world and not after, the, not after Christ. 
For after that in the wisdom, back in 1 Corinthians, after the, for that, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Because the cross is death. There has to be, in order for something new to begin, something old has to die. <laughs> okay? But unto them which are called Call, not Calvinism. Call. The called way of the cross. God chose the cross. Hence, you go the way of the cross, that's the called way. Not this ridiculous Calvinism stupidity. But undo them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And who calls what God does foolish? Those of the world. Rome. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Okay? Acts 20. So see, God will have men to preach. Okay? Okay? Stay with me here. Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 30. Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 30. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit hath made you overseers. To what? Feed the Christians. No, to feed the church of God, which is his body. Okay, not a building. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Uh, Christ didn't purchase this with his own blood. The Christ of the scriptures did not found Rome or the Catholic Church. Satan did. You should go to the church that Christ founded. Which, which one are you talking about? Buddy? Shut up. Satan founded Roman Catholicism. Not the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Lord, rebuke you, devil. Okay? For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away, away disciples after them. Calvinism. Lutheranism. German Catholicism. Mormonism, Joseph Smith, Freemason. Okay? Ye have God said. Okay? Ephesians 3. See, prophesying, and we're going to touch on this. Prophesying today. See, a saved believer with the Lord within them speaks to you brethren church of the living God through the scripture and the spirit that is within us the same capital S spirit the father that dwells within us identify because it is the scripture okay but Ephesians chapter 3 verses 11 on to verse 16 Ephesians chapter 3. Ah, you were in the wrong place. Uh, one moment. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 16. I beg your pardon. I put down 3 instead of 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 11 on to verse 16. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why? See, 
God the Father who dwells within us, okay, will teach and exhort and um, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God will use man to teach and to preach because the Lord would be in that man teaching them the scriptures through the Lord. Okay? That's how that works. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay, lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? God uses man. Okay? But it is the Lord within man that will guide them on to all truth. Okay? God uses man. Yes, he does. But see, at the end of the day, this video will be what? At two hours the most. But what are you going to do with the rest of it? You have the Lord within you and the scriptures. Okay? But see, a Catholic who doesn't have the Lord... Okay, they need to go to a man. They're taught to go to a man instead thereof. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Not, uh, one, one moment, <laughs> brethren. Okay, sorry about that. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. Till I come, give attendance to reading. What is he reading? The scriptures. To exhortation. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. What is this gift? What is this gift? Well, let's, let's let the scripture answer that really quickly. Ephesians chapter 2. What's the gift that was in Timothy? Verses 8 and 10. On to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Not of works! lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy, by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You're right, God never said to read the Bible. But he clearly wants you to read the scriptures. Catholic, Satan doesn't want you reading the scriptures. Because if you were to read the scriptures, you would see that this is nothing but a lie. Nothing but a lie. And then when you got some twit coming around saying, this is why you got to go to Catholicism, because they'll teach you the truth. Dude, you're lost. 
You've fallen into your, you're being manipulated. You, your mind is controlled by Satan. Okay? <laughs> All right? All right? 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, but not, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre like Roman Christianity, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords like Diotrephes, over God's heritage, but being in samples, I love that word, to the flock. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. Verses one on to verse six. Now there are devils out there who used to say that uh, and I and I taught this for a while myself, that if someone could say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh that means they're saved. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Devils can say that. I was wrong about that. I've, that's been repented of and uh, refuted through Scripture. Okay? But watch out. Watch out for people who try to deceive you, saying, See, I'm, I'm saying I'm a Christian. Jesus, Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Now, what is this talking about? 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every lowercase s spirit, but try the lowercase s spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Prophets. The ones who are doing the speaking. Okay? That's what contextually this is talking about. Okay? This contextually. Prophets today. We do not have the Old Testament prophet today making revelation of things that are not written. Okay? Alright? Prophets today are those who, number one, have the Lord within them and are expounding, expounding to you through the Lord the Scripture. That is a prophet today. That is why you have to be adamantly and vehemently against these charismatics because they want you to believe that they are an Old Testament prophet giving extra scriptural revelation, which nine times out of ten contradict rightly divided scripture. Okay? So see, the tie-in, the thing, the key to this is false prophets. Okay? The ones who are doing the teaching. Roman Catholicism is full of false prophets. Okay? Verse 2. Hereby know ye the capital S, the Lord himself, Spirit of God. Every lowercase spirit that confesseth that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. So someone doing the teaching that cannot say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay? All right? This is not a smoking gun willy-nilly that means anyone that can say it is saved. No. Context. False prophets. The preachers and teachers. The ones who are teaching you. Do they confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Alive? Living? And every lowercase s spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Okay? In the description box will be the first John video where we get into it extremely deeply, 
debunking this whole thing that just because somebody can, any willy-nilly guy from England who could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Means they're saved and they're actually a Jesuit coadjutor devil? No. 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 Context is talking about those who are professing to be the teachers, the prophets. Okay? All right? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, the Lord, than he that is in the world, that spirit of Antichrist. That's why you Catholics are taught to go to your Jesuit priest, because you do not have the Lord living within you. They, Catholicism, are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God because we have the Lord within them, within, within us. We are of God. He that knoweth God has God within them, heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s spirit of truth and the lowercase s spirit of error. Catholic, get yourself an authorized version. Start in the book of Romans. Read it. Read it. Stay away from your Jesuit priest. <laughs> Spend some time with the Lord in his word, the authorized version. Okay? Because Rome doesn't want you here. The scriptures... Rome wants you here so that they can guide you there to help. Okay? So, that is going to be it for this little video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.